She's in her clothes getting high. Super fuckers. Everybody wishes we would die. Super fuckers. It's the Rebel Taxi Pizza Party Podcast on YouTube.com slash Twitch.com. But no, we're not on Twitch right now. But it's uh, me, Pan, and who are you, people? I'm Nolan. Uh, I'm on Twitch.tv all the time. I'm Izzy. I uh, am not on Twitch, like, ever. Mm -hmm. And who's our guest? Hey, uh, I'm Adam Nasrallah. I'm the producer for all things Cyanide and Happiness. Um, I am never on Twitch. I barely know how to use it, so. <laughs> yeah. Are you cyanide or are you happiness? Which one are you? I'm the I'm the ampersand, right in the middle. Damn. Aww. So the and the swirly and he brings it together. He brings yeah. it together, which is what a producer. What does a producer do? It's a good question, right? I'm still learning <laughs> that. Um, yeah, man. Like I, I basically what I do is I am keeping the keeping the coal in the fire, letting that train keep going, keep running. Um, but uh, I basically manage all of our productions, all of our shows. Um, sort of help with the big picture plan of you know what are we doing, uh, you know, a year from now, and when we have a show, you know, what's the show like? How how are we gonna run everything for the show? Uh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll get all the scripts in and, and, and sort of go over all that stuff and, uh, you know, see what, what's really feasible, what's not really feasible and sort of help on that process. And, uh, yeah, basically manage the entire studio in that aspect. Very nice. For someone who hasn't seen Sign and Happiness, if you were to pick, pick one cartoon to recommend, which one would it be? Oh my gosh. That's such a hard question. Cause there's literally like hundreds of them. Um, <laughs> there's one to pick that is cyanide and happiness um a a really big fan favorite which is like i don't think any one of us even understands why 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 is this character so popular um but ted bear mm -hmm. ted, ted bear if you're not familiar with him he's basically like our version of bear grills um <laughs> oh, no. the whole wildlife survivor guy so um i recommend uh if you've never seen cyanide and happiness before um, it's pretty good for all ages. I recommend Ted uh -oh. Bear. Check out Ted Bear. After a while, all the walking will leave you bleed naked. You need to find a source of food. There are bounties of food in the wilderness. You've just got to know where to look. <gasps> bacon! We must be underneath a bacon tree! I think the one that I, that first got me into cyanide and happiness, it was back in like dig.com, like this one on the front page. Uh, the yeah. one waiting for the bus, the one where yeah. the guy could run really fast. I thought about mentioning that one. That's That was kind of the other one I was thinking, well, maybe I could do that one. Um, that's a classic. Uh, mm -hmm. The million, uh, million uh, mile per hour man. Yeah. Um, yeah, waiting for the bus. That one, that one's a cult classic. Uh, has a huge, huge following. So that's a good one too. Um, that you could definitely start off with. It's it's all dark humor and stuff. Uh, if you like South Park or things of that nature, it's pretty pretty on par, pretty on, in the same vein. The Transformers will return after these messages. But first, this podcast is supported by Patreon donators of $100. First is Alfredo, who wants to show off their comic Bongo and Luna. Links below. It's a slice of life story of a serious big titty clown girl, Bongo, and her best friend, a lusty ghost, Luna. Bongo and Luna updates every Tuesdays and Thursdays. It has cute monster girls. Please read it. Our other donator is Kovi, who wants to promote their animated web cartoon, Blood Thing. It's about a blob of blood desperately trying to make friends in a world full of assholes. It's crazy resourceful they're pulling this off with so little at their disposal, yet it works really well. Check out Blood Thing and Bongo and Luna. Links below. We now return to the Transformers. You have a Kickstarter out right now, but it's already completed, right? Yes. Yeah. What was Trial that project about? Trial by Trolley. Um, that was our, uh, our our second card game that we're doing that was with... Uh, um, we partnered with Skybound Games. Mm -hmm. um, Trial by Trolley, it's like... Uh, it's it's the whole trolley problem, right? Like, you're, you're on a track. Uh, you got to, you know, make a decision. It's splitting. You got to go, you know, either right or left. And... Um, you know, you have different obstacles in your path and you got to decide, you know, what are, what are you going to hit? You know, what are you going to avoid hitting? Uh, you know, on the left, it could be, you know, your grandparents who have lived for like 90 years 
and on the right, you know, it could be like a newborn baby. And you know, like, well, who do I decide? I mean, these guys have had a fulfilled life. This guy's so, just starting. But if you go for the grandparents, people can throw in modifiers like, oh, well, if you don't hit the baby, he's got like, you know, a 75% chance of becoming the next Hitler. So it's the... Uh, <laughs> That kind of that kind of stuff, and so about like kind of moral dilemma and whatnot. And it's uh, it's pretty fun. It's gonna be really funny. Cause it reminds me, um, I sent I still use Firefox for some reason, and uh, randomly it just recommended to me an article called uh, "Should a self driving car kill the baby or the grandma?" Oh, uh, <laughs> well, I guess we inspired that. Uh, <laughs> I'd like to I'd like to know its decision on that one. Knowing clickbait articles, I bet they don't even answer the question. Damn. They're probably just like. Yeah, this is an interesting question that we hope science will eventually find out. Yeah, it's like a big <laughs> well. heap of big heap of nothing answer. But I love I love that you're coming up with a card. I love card games like that, and that sounds like a really fun one based on trolley problems. <laughs> it's gonna be really good. It's pretty interactive. I I, I really hope that uh, everyone enjoys it. And mm -hmm. so forth. Yeah, look, let me know what you guys think if you uh, end up getting it. I'll, I'll make a note of it. I just don't have anybody to play card games with. <laughs> I okay, so like legitimately, I have a lot of board games or like tabletop, but like never play them. And my favorite phrase when purchasing stuff, like I went to Gen Con, I'm like, I can't wait to never play this. <laughs> right, it, but the art's nice. Oh yes. yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I, I have a little a shelf behind me that's got like uh, one, two, three, four. I don't know how many that uh, still have wrapping on them. So I'm there with you. <laughs> I have a few yeah. of those. <laughs> Uh, in trial good... by trolley is uh, Frida Kahlo one of the cards? Frida Kahlo, <laughs> uh, that you know the one Mexican lady with the the unibrow, the unibrow, the artist. Yes. Well, is that like a reference to something? Uh, she, she got crippled from a trolley accident. Oh my God. <laughs> Damn! Wow. Now, yeah. well, now we now it will be now. Yeah. That's, that's your uh, Mexican I... lesson for today. <laughs> Pan just came up with a card. <laughs> <laughs> Mexican, how, how many Mexican facts do you have, like lessons? Uh, I don't know. You want to know more about Mucha Lucha? <laughs> I do. That's all I got. Yeah. Yeah, give us the Mucha Lucha rundown, man. All right. I don't know. Go watch my video. I don't know. Bastard. Oh, I, I don't turn, know. You turn an interesting okay. conversation piece into a, it's a the, shell for your video, you bastard. It's the first Flash animated TV show ever. Okay. It has the best character, Snoopy. Yes. Good job. You did it. Yeah. But um, I was going to say, you know, if you ever consider going into like digital games or something, if you ever turned your uh, card games into like digital card games or like things for tabletop simulator, like I'd be down. I'd pay. I'd pay for that online. Well, so do you, know, keep... do you know about our, uh, you know, about Joking Hazard or other game? I do. Yes. I know about that one. Yeah. Yeah. So that one, that one kind of started out as our uh, online ramic, uh, ram, ramic, the random <laughs> comic generator, which that's a new word now, ramic, um, for short. Uh, it's our random comic generator, so like it kind of plays the same way like our game would. Um, it's just all you know, digital or whatever. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything upcoming for uh, cyanide and happiness uh, that you can yeah. talk about? If you can talk about, for sure, for sure. Um, yeah, we got a handful of stuff. Um, so there's a game that, yeah, we just, we just kickstarted, which is that trial by trolley. Uh, mm -hmm. and then we have, um, a video game that we kickstarted a while back called, uh, freak apocalypse. Mm -hmm. It's like a, it's a point and click adventure game where you get to live in the universe of cyanide happiness, which is pretty sweet. It's the first time, you know, that you kind of get to interact with a lot of the characters from the shorts and from the shows. <laughs> uh, you're playing as, uh, a kid named Coop who, is sort of going through like you know high school with uh, your typical troubles of you know bullies. He's a loner, um, you know, trying to figure out how to go to prom, all that fun you know stuff we've all obviously been through. Uh, and then he causes a freak accident that basically kickstarts the apocalypse, and he has to deal with that shit too. Yeah. So it's fun because you get to live in that whole C and H universe that we sort of uh, mustered up, and it's all the same writing, same voice acting, and, and all that. And uh, that's gonna be a lot of fun. Um, it's very like reference on like, you know, or reference or I should say, uh, inspired, you know, like monkey Island and a bunch of old, like old <laughs> point click games. Yeah. So that's coming up soon. Um, and that's going to be three chapters. And then currently, like I mentioned earlier, uh, on verve, we're doing season four. 
of the Sign Happiness Show, and that is hands down some of the coolest shit that we have like ever done and ever made. It looks <laughs> phenomenal, and it is so fucking funny. I don't know if I can say that on here, and if you guys are like, oh. no, you can. Oh, oh you can okay. swear. Yeah. It's fine. Cool. Yeah, our, um, our theme song is literally um, "Super Fuckers." Fuckers. Yeah. <laughs> Super Fuckers. Sweet. That old yes. show. So it's. It's fucking great. Um, and I'm I'm super stoked. And I'm really excited for everybody to see it. And uh, there's going to be more announcements uh, for that here really, really, really soon. Um, and and soon everyone will be able to see it. But you got to go watch it on Verve. So support mm-hmm. us on Verve so that way we can yeah. do season five. <laughs> go to Rebel Taxi. No, go to ver- <laughs> Verve.com slash Rebel Taxi to get your 30 day free trial. And watch yeah. the Cyanide and Happiness show. It benefits everybody in here except for me and Izzy. Yeah, please, please. but uh, I I have an announcement that I'm really. What is your announcement? To talk about. Oh boy. Okay, so um, I got a new gig. Uh, uh, yes. And I am now involved with Long Gone Gulch. I am a cleanup animator. Yeah. Ooh, there yeah. it is. is What's awesome. that? Everyone is he... talks at the same time. Yeah, oh. that's, just, that's just all the congratulations at once. <laughs> just like mm-hmm. Evangelion. Congratulations. It's one at a time. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> everybody starts club yeah um i'm super Walk. stoked about it um it's i'm super stressed too because like oh, i technically now have four jobs because oh, I, I i still oh. animate full-time for yo mama i teach part-time which class has just started this week and uh i also do a lot of burlesque kittening stuff but then um now uh-huh. this and but even though I'm super stressed, I'm not sleeping well enough, and I'm not taking care of my body, I am the happiest I've ever been. Like, I am so fulfilled creatively right now. I, I've, I've done two shots. I can't really say anything about the project for NDA purposes, but mm-hmm. I've gotten it's two a- shots done. So two pieces of my work is in there. Uh, and as a cleanup animator, basically, I'm just taking sketched animation and taking it to the final level. Um, if you want to add a clip from Mallrats where it's, you're just a tracer. <laughs> oh no, Wait. that's from uh, Chasing Amy. Chasing Amy. Oh, okay. I know these things. That's Wait super cool. Wait a minute. Hold on. Can you tell us if it's a show about cowboys? I can confirm. I think that oh. does not break my NDA. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I was gonna say, if you're super super stressed, there's uh something that uh, I've learned in in my past. Um, there's a solution for that, and it's quite simple. And I'm surprised a lot of people don't think about it. Um, quit. No, oh. I love all the things I do. Uh, I, lo- I love Just... this hat I found on Facebook. Ew. Just give Whoa. up on the dream. Pan, you should make this the what? image insert in the Why? chat. Why? <laughs> I love, I love no. Uh, for, for the visually Amazing. impaired, because this is a podcast, uh, we are looking at a hat made of Kraft American That's single me. cheese. Squares. It's, it's, it's like a the fakest hat you'll ever see. It's a baseball cap specifically. Like I think that that's like specific thing leads to it. I is more important for the details. It kind of mm-hmm. looks like a cheese version of the Marty McFly hat from the future. This hat <laughs> oh. a- appropriate because this hat came from the future. What pages oh. are you following on Facebook? Um, I don't know. Uh, my I follow a lot of weird pages. Um, I is follow it literally... an even... is it cheese hats pages? Cause no. Oh, is it is it literally like that'd be like the perfect like crafts page, like <laughs> crafting stuff, but it's all cheese, oh. craft cheese. True. Yeah, I think Make the one cheese. closest to that, like in terms of weirdness, is uh, toilets with threatening auras. No. I, I don't like that, that page. Never go there. I found a really good page where it's dedicated to like really bad uh, like uh, designs for like houses and such, like <laughs> oh. doors going like or like in the middle of the sh- stairs and stuff, or like uh, there's a bathtub that's behind a toilet. Yeah, <laughs> brilliant. I, just, I love I love pages like that. It's just a shame, but um, we got some news. Do animation we? news yes whoa you, you guys remember shaquille o'neal well he's back and he wants you to he's having a contest where he wants some anyone to animate a an audio tract of his life story or whatever and if you win you get 500 dollars, and it gets to be on tv and if you don't you get nothing and you wasted your time animating 
five hundred dollars is worth every cent of Shaquille O'Neal's animated life. One hundred percent. Absolutely. Best. Only if you win, though. Otherwise, get out. <laughs> it's amazing. For no reason. It's just like <laughs> we're seriously doing this. We're doing the mass animation thing again. Now, is this like documentary length or what is this? Like, how, how, much, how fast can you animate and tell his life? Like, what's his I don't know. length on this? It, it's like three weeks, too, isn't it? Like, you got yeah. three weeks to do it? Until September three. 21st to animate, like, a three-minute segment, I believe. You, you got to tell his life in three minutes? I guess. I'm not sure. Is it just going to be mixed between different artists or what? Yeah, I mean, like, if one person's doing it, it's going to be a really shitty, like, puppeteer animation. Oh, they should yeah. do those. They should do those uh, shared animations. I don't know if you guys have ever seen those before, like, yeah, like Shrek Fest and all that. Yeah, yeah. There was one recently for um, uh, Courage the Cowardly Dog, the Freaky Fred episode, a reanimate project. What? They did one for that? Yeah, just recently. Oh it's, up, it's up now, I think. Dude, that's one of my that was one of my biggest inspirations as a child was Courage the Cowardly Dog. Oh man, Courage was rad. Yeah, yeah. I like well, the theory that Courage the Cowardly Dog is actually not supernatural, but instead it's all perspective of a dog. So with them being in the middle of nowhere, that's just because that's how a dog thinks. <laughs> I can I can understand the appeal of that. I but I always thought that like took the magic out of it because like with animation you could do anything. So like if the idea is that it's just like a lens that we're looking through, it just kind of feels like. I don't know, it feels like cheating, you know? Does that make yeah. any sense? Well, if it makes you feel better, uh, John R. Dilworth in my interview from, like, years ago said that all fan theories are... I don't know, he just likes that people are making fan theories. It's art, it's open for interpretation, it's fine. Yeah, like, uh... What was the... it like talking to him? Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, it was fun, it was... What was he promoting? Oh, he, he just wanted to promote that one Chinese Courage the Cowardly Dog short, the CGI one that came out a yeah, few yeah, years yeah. ago and never aired in America for some reason. Yeah, I saw like word about all that and uh, I never saw it. And I guess I got to hunt the back doors of the Internet. Yeah, it's like I feel Cartoon Network should at least release that somewhere because, you know, Nickelodeon's got their Rocco and Zim shorts. I mean, uh, Jim, Zim specials out. Have, have you you've seen so then you've seen like his uh his one animation where it's like him right and it's just all really weird and wonky and he turns into a tree and all that weird <laughs> stuff. You know what I'm um, talking about? Jo I think I think that's on his YouTube from forever ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's just the only thing I can imagine ever processes like in his mind. Um, <laughs> just, I got I gotta know like what that dude was. What was that like talking with him? Well, apparently his uh. Much of his inspiration was not from horror movies, but like artists like Salvador Dali, any surreal yeah. stuff. That makes yeah. that, that's super obvious if you really do. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, look, Laura brought a knife, everybody. We're going to die out here. There's no need to overreact. Ah, it it's a jungle puzzle. Oops, that's a real crossbow. Honey, it's a real crossbow, yeah. I am the lost city of gold. This film is not get rated. Ah. Uh. I knew I was missing something. I really want to watch the Dora movie, and I just keep Dora forgetting. Movie. The Dora movie is awesome. <laughs> we, I believe we it. We all thought we were getting punked. I was like, wait, hold up. Is this what I think it is? And we looked is over, it... and we're just like, all right, we're 100% in. When do we? When can we get our tickets? Holy shit. Is this real? It, yeah. And it, it was good. Like, it wasn't like, you know, it wasn't like a cine cinematographic masterpiece or whatever, but it was like... It was fun. I loved it. Yeah. Did you Don't uh at me Twitter? What? So is Swiper in it? Oh yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's and he's a straight up fox too. They don't give a shit at all. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of jarring because like he's like one of the only CGI creatures in this world, and you kind of forget that there are CG creatures and it's it's kind of off. They, they bring attention to it though. They're like, was that a fucking talking fox i thought it was pretty good but like it does feel like it was very cheap and they kind of it feels like they ran out of humor by the end but it, it, apparently this lost city of gold it it's populated by like three people and it's like a square block and that's all pan we only just saw a little bit of it that's what happened Shh. Shh. it looked like um, a saturday night live skit it did it did no it, it did look very cheap but they it, I, I enjoyed it, and I feel like they really cared about the source material, surprisingly, considering it's Dora. <laughs> so 
Yeah, I, I couldn't even imagine what to expect from that, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I, the trailer watched, looks so uh, good. I just watched Ready or Not last night. I don't know if mm. you've seen that. Oh, yeah, I want to. It looks looks fun. Tell us yeah. about that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't want to spoil nothing, but I mean, it was it's a fun ride. You know, it's uh, uh, I didn't know I didn't have any expectations. I actually don't even remember seeing the trailer. Um, just kept hearing everybody talking about it. And mm-hmm. so we went and checked it out last night. And uh, it it really does pay off, especially at the end, because um, you don't really know what to expect. And uh, I don't want to spoil it for anybody. Yeah, I, recommend, I, I recommend it's, it's a it's a good movie if you know nothing about it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, mm-hmm. I'm that I'm the perfect demographic. I did go see a movie recently, but it's not animation oriented. What was it? Uh, scary stories to tell in the dark. Oh, I want to see, want to see that. I so liked good. it. I got beef I, with that movie. I'm okay. sorry. Oh, go tell for us, it. Tell Let's us. do it. Throw got, down. <laughs> throw okay. down. All right. So here's the deal with that one. Um, so I loved that book growing up. Uh, I mean, I remember, you know, we'd have that scholastic book fair if you guys ever had that come to yeah. school mm-hmm. back in the day um and we would always get that and and again you know s- share those scary stories and and read them and i would always sit there you know in a in a dark corner trying to spook myself and the thing that i think i have the biggest beef with is because i'm a big horror fan i love horror and it takes like a lot for me to get scared from something um i genuinely want to be freaked out but i love like psychological stuff that gets in your head and kind of makes you think more so than the jump scare stuff because you can see it coming um the thing Mm -hmm. about this one and it was a good adaptation in my opinion it's another situation where if you never saw a trailer you're good I didn't Mm -hmm. actually see a trailer. I don't see trailers for movies. You had a much better experience than I did because if you see the trailer, it literally shows every single like creature or monster and who they're attached to. And basically in the same Uh order, it happens in the movie. Oh, so there was zero surprise. And then at the one at the end, when there was like one last, you know, reveal that they never revealed. I mean, I looked over. I'm like, oh, okay, well, clearly it's X, Y, Z. And there just wasn't any uh, surprise factor per se. Mm -hmm. And they already showed all of it. I mean, marketing sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So it's I, uh, not so much as a beef with the movie so much as it is with the marketing. marketing. Yeah. Right. And I guess that's a better way to put it. I mean, the, the marketing in itself, like I get it. Like you gotta sell the horror, and it's a horror movie, right? Like if, if you if you want to make money, like in Hollywood, make a horror movie, and that's that's literally probably one of the best things to do, because um, everyone's gonna go see it. Everyone wants to go get scared, but they should not show yeah. literally everything and the same order that it comes in. So. That was my biggest beef with it because I, c- I couldn't enjoy it knowing that like, oh, well, we're just we're on the next part of the trailer. And I try to avoid trailers. I, I love teasers like a teaser is a perfect trailer. Just that's it. Cool. Mm-hmm. That. I've already told this story on the podcast before, but you're new. Um, I'm <laughs> I, I like to go into movies knowing as little as possible to the point to where I actually saw Judo because I thought it was a, or Juno because I thought it was Judo. And I, I totally got like a completely different movie than I'm going in and what I was expecting. So I didn't even see the trailer or a poster or anything. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent agree at this point. Yeah. Uh, but one thing I do like about uh, Scary Story to Tell in the Dark, there was the first kill. They It's a PG-13 movie and they had a stabbing. And instead of showing blood, which they could have easily done on an R-rated film, they, they got more creative. And instead they had something way, <laughs> just more I guess surreal and just what happened. And I felt that was more effective. The PG 13 kind of helped with that film. You're talking yeah. about like the hay aspect. Yeah. 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 That was pretty gnarly. I will say. Mm-hmm. And I Visually, guess it was, it was gorgeous. I think my favorite one was the, uh, was the hospital. Oh yeah. That was really oh, creepy. Yeah. Um, it, was a, it was a nice way to do it for sure. Yeah. I really like the fact that none of the actors were well known except for, cause like the, the, probably my least favorite part was uh, the guy who plays Hank from Breaking Bad was in it. Because oh, all I can yeah. see is Hank from Breaking Bad. Uh, <laughs> I like when movies use new actors just because I get to actually associate them with the character and not think, oh, it's famous actor playing this. Right. Yeah, I, I, I agree with you. I know that when he came up, we all started laughing. So, <laughs> well, yeah. Yeah. What do so you guys think else? of the new... Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, go ahead. No, I... Go ahead. I was gonna say, what what do you guys think of uh, 
Adam's family coming out. Oh, oh yeah, that's coming amazing. out. Actually, someone part of the Discord, uh, a previous guest, is working on that movie. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it looks cute. Um, I don't know about the character designs personally, though. Some of them will fit. I feel like what would have worked is if the Adams family had the style that they do, and then everybody else was more like kind of cutesy looking. Oh, personally. I agree with that one hundred percent. Because yeah. everybody, yeah. everybody looking weird m- makes the Adams family look less weird by comparison. Oh. But that, that's just me. I don't mind Maybe. if they were stylized, but like the like the best friend to Wednesday looking character, I she's just ugly it's a bad design well it, maybe oh. maybe the message is that humans are the real monsters ah uh. i hate you yeah, we, i mean we are i hate you so much Peter. that's not a message we know we truly do live in a society it looks good but what well, i think it'll be all right but one thing that's bugging me from the trailers is there are a few shots that look very empty like there's supposed to be a crowd running away in a very wide shot and there's only like three people there so what I mean? kinda, yeah, it, it feels uh, almost unfinished, um, and yeah. I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping that those are kind of like early shots. I'm kind of in the same boat where I'm looking at, man, I, you know, I love Adam's family. I want to be excited, you know, about hmm. this. I don't know yet, you know, I don't want to be let down, but you know, we'll see. You never know; it could be a great surprise. I mean, I will say, like, one of the movies that really surprised me, um, and some may agree, some may not. I don't give Door a shit. The Explorer. Uh, no, definitely not. <laughs> um, the Jungle Book. Huh. Uh, I when that came out, or when the trailers came out, whatever, they it looked so bad. Um, in my opinion, mm. like the lip sync was off. I didn't like it. Um, I was not excited at all about the idea of seeing it or seeing it or whatever. Um, and then I get it. Like you know, why take something already pre-existing in, in animation? You know, that is that is this classic, and then you're trying to adapt it to this new style. And I get everybody's beef with all that, and it's not um, – they're not all wrong. But, uh, you know, I, I also think that there is room for, you know, different opportunities and different point of views. Um, and so I ended up going to see it with family just because that's what family wanted to do. And I walked out of that, and I was like, holy shit. That was like way more enjoyable than I expected it to be, and not only that, but the animation was freaking awesome. the The lip sync and everything was great, and it was it was almost like okay, what, like I get it, like everything was not finished, you know, in that trailer. So I'm kind of hoping that that same sort of thing could happen, you know, like with Adam's family, you know, where you're saying like, oh, the shot doesn't look done, or or maybe there needs more in it, or so on so forth, maybe. Maybe this might have that same effect, but so I, it, it I think not. it might also be a little bit of budget because when it comes to CGI movies, uh, crowds tend to look really sparse or like uh, like the Ninja Turtles cartoon, the 2012 one. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, it just because oh seven, oh seven, yeah. or whichever 3D one. Yeah, oh seven. Yeah. Okay, uh, tw- um, that one had a lot of like problems with it looking very sparse. For New York, it was like only two people were ever out at any given time, <laughs> but. Um, that's the one downside to 3D is that 2D you can have no one in the background and it looks totally fine. But yeah. for some reason 3D there's this extra layer of space and it becomes really right. obnoxious. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Good point. Um, it, it's also yeah like you can like Captain Underpants also had a similar budget thing where it was a very very on the cheap movie and a lot of the like Buckley Dave Pilkey style leads to being able to like make characters that are very distinct yet very simple and use the same kind of like features whereas in 3d you can only have make so many characters with so many features like if you notice in illumination movies especially sing they reuse the same character models and just either swap clothes or change the color which is easy to do um well i'm not maybe not in the clothes but switching colors is easy but yeah yeah that's usually a telltale sign of like budgetary constraints is like a lack of you you multiple unique characters or um other things like that okay well i remember the incredibles dvd they talked about how they basically had to make their own character creator just to fill up all the audiences in in the movie yeah Yeah. i yeah no incredibles one had a lot of technology behind like a lot of technology because brad bird fucking forced them to like he was like we need to have mr incredible put his hand through a torn up suit and the animators were like Brad, please don't make us do this. Please don't make <laughs> us do this. And he's like, you're going to fucking do it. I told you to. You're going to do it. And everybody's just like, God, Brad. Also, <sighs> Violet needs to have realistic reactive hair. 
Brad, uh. Brad, please. <laughs> and so, yeah, they. I wouldn't be surprised that they had to come up with a character creator system. Oh, I think oh, yeah. if memory served me correct, I think Big Hero Six. They actually they created a whole new like uh, render system or whatever it's called, just for the sake of like rendering the movie. Um, I had hmm. a, I had some friends that worked on that, and uh, they were telling me that basically the shots and everything were so heavy that like their systems actually could not render it. And at one point they were like in the middle of transitioning to this entire new system. And so like half the movie was on this old system and the other half was on this new system. And so they couldn't get the old stuff to render out um, like the new one. So they had to do this whole big old transfer where essentially during this transfer process, if anything were to happen were to corrupt or crash or whatever, corrupt or crash, um, Again, these are just words from someone that was working on it, uh, and I don't know, you know, how factual all of it is, but there was something to the degree of there was a risk of actually losing like a good portion of the movie mm. in doing so. Uh, yeah, that's here. Such a wild, uh, a wild risk, you know, on on something, especially with a budget and and timelines of that nature. But I mean, they did it, and it's success. It's it's successful. I remember they were saying that they could take like a frame from Frozen, and what could essentially render out at like you know, if it took you know six hours, it it might take six minutes or something ridiculous like that. I don't know. Yeah, no. I'm, anyway. I'm kind of wondering like how much further until like we'll be able to like render this stuff in real time. You know, like when are we gonna? When is like the PS6 gonna render Toy Story in real time? You know. I mean, we're getting there. There's like a lot of those stuff made in Unity now. There's a lot of short animated shorts people are doing in Unity mm. that are rendering stuff, you know, in more real time base. Yeah. Uh, also, that reboot reboot was filmed it with a game engine so that they didn't have uh, to render it. Oh wow! <laughs> That's why a lot of the like, um, if you look it's at like, megabytes like glowing effects, they're soup. They're just planes. Like they're really bad up close. <laughs> Is it just mm. is, is it just a big Gary's mod? That's what the reboot reboot is, <laughs> basically. Oh man, yeah. But they specifically chose it because they're like, we could either spend hours and resources on rendering, or we can have this thing render real time, and it's perfect. And it's like, nah. just did not look good. Um, mm -mm. Jumping back to the Incredibles, I think the hardest thing wasn't uh, Violet's hair or cloth. I think it was getting it to where Mister Incredible and um, an elastic girl could kiss because of his character design was so like weird. They had to like manipulate so many, like the perspective, like they can't actually kiss. They can't. No, the two models can't what kiss. What a sad their, nerd. <laughs> right. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> because their mouths can't reach each other because of his nose. So uh, it only <laughs> works from like certain angles. Head. <laughs> yeah. Three, 3d is really weird because like, they, you have to use forced perspective like all the time, even for simple stuff. Like I know in uh, mm -hmm. the JoJo's Bizarre Adventure 3D openings, when characters are doing their ridiculous poses, like what the models look like off screen is like fucking a mess of polygons because they have to contort the model that much to get the right pose. Oh, it's yeah. like a, it, there's a, in a scene in Toy Story 3 and it's like in the beginning montage stuff where um andy's you know kind of like playing around in his room and he's like twirling with woody or something and he jumps onto his bed and it's like a top-down view and uh chris fowler who was the lighter on that um i believe was uh talking about how there were like you know something stupid like 30 or 300 lights just to light that scene um hmm. but essentially what they had to do and if you turned it in like a you know a different perspective you know andy's like floating 30 feet above his bed <laughs> um, and uh, everything's all like out of place, all contorted in a bunch of weird angles and stuff. And uh, and yeah, it's it's fun. I actually like my background was actually um, in 3D. Yeah. Uh, so that's uh, we had a lot of experience. I did this short film. I I love the whole like you know cheating something to make it look a certain way. Uh, Me too. Just because it's 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 not necessarily that it's a you know oh man this is a good shortcut. Sometimes that ends up being like way more fucking difficult than it actually being proper. Um, and so we I did this short film. Uh, it's called Sticky, and it's about like this little tug of war game between a chameleon and a fly. Um, and there's a scene where spoiler alert for anyone who ever finds it uh he's in a terrarium and uh there is this piece of glass like just the glass of the terrarium in itself was 
breaking all of our machines. Like there was literally not a single machine that could just render this one stupid piece of glass that was in one shot of the whole thing. And so we had to go in there and we actually took like a sheet of metal and brought down that uh, opacity on it and then just basically comped it into Nuke and vibrated it, you know, like just kind of wiggled it, you know, back and forth and scaled it so it could look like a piece of glass getting slammed. Um, <laughs> and it was just kind of fun to know that we pulled off those little tiny tricks and stuff. Damn. Yeah, it was fun. One of my favorite um, watching DVDs and such was Shrek 2. Uh, the first time you see Puss in Boots, it's like really dark and shadowy. And he's it's Puss sitting there and then like his feet's on the table. But because of how his body's built, he, that's impossible. Right. So it's really two Puss in the Boots uh, rigs, one destroyed so the legs can be up there and such. <laughs> and at the time, you know, CGI films were such in its infancy that like the director's like, I don't know what that's going to look like. You know, like he doesn't know how it's going to render. And he ha just has to hope the animators know what they're doing. Because <laughs> oh, to him, man. it's these two broken up rigs. That's all he saw. <laughs> but there's some times where, uh, I don't know, somebody screwed up with the camera work and revealed the force perspective. Because in the, in the movie Boss Baby... Uh, there's a scene, there's just a random scene where uh, the, the baby and the little boy are like double their size. Meanwhile, their parents are just sleeping on the sofa and they're they're normal sized. Like it, it, the shot made it into the movie and I, if I had the image. I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah, that scene. I remember I made an idiot out of myself on that one because I was like, that must just be a behind the scenes shot. And you're like, no, it's in the movie. And I'm like, yeah, Fuck. I watched this movie twice for some reason some raisin yes how often do you guys find yourself explaining the entire process of animation before even get into your fucking point on why you even wanted to begin the conversation to begin with <laughs> <laughs> why why you gotta call us out like that wow it's, it's just in every it's in every every time it's every time ow but I do want to mention um, yeah. my segue that I got interrupted earlier was, you know what looks better than it has any right to be? Hmm. The Scoob movie. Have the you guys Scooby seen the renders? That's not out yet. It's not out, but they've shown renders of Scooby and Shaggy, and they look really good. Oh, Scooby-Doo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm hopeful for it. I mean, I love Scooby-Doo. What have you watched recently? <laughs> Ready or not. Uh, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, yeah. Um, that, was, that was a lot of fun uh good boys good boys was like a uh -oh. lot more fun than i enjoy uh, than i expected it to be i was laughing pretty good <laughs> but you sound like you didn't like it oh i didn't see it but sandra keeps saying it's a movie for pedophiles oh, oh yeah. no somewhat oh. i mean you're awful pan your privileges <laughs> to internet have been revoked why am i awful she's the one who said it your friend you you associate with her what did I do? I just what did she you. do? Uh, oh, I, I recently watched uh, Twelve Forever. That's on Netflix. Oh, right, that happened. Yes. I yeah, that's it, that's exactly the best way to describe it. Is it happened? Oh well, I thought it was. I, I love all the side characters on that show. They're really funny. Update. This was recorded before any twelve. Update. This was recorded before any 12 Forever controversy happened with the creator, Julie Vickerman. You all look it up. It's, you know, I don't know. It's bad. Um, for those who are unfamiliar, 12 Forever is about a girl that's really immature and has the ability to go into a fantasy-ish, maybe real world. And it's just like basically a bunch of random characters. It, it feels like it wants to be Adventure Time at parts with some of the designs. Mm -hmm. but like i i just got really annoyed with it because i don't agree with the main character maybe it's because i'm on the other side of maturity but like all the other characters i felt were like more like had a leg to stand on with their grievances and she never got like they never moved forward with her no yeah Pop that, that one to the list do it <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i have a i have a huge backlog so. mm -hmm. me too i, I just too. uh I got super excited yesterday because the Good Place came back out. Um, I don't know if or the new season of good, the Good Place. I don't know if you guys watched the Good Place, but that show is brilliant. Okay, that sounds familiar. What's that about again? Good Place. Um, it's so, about uh, these uh, people that basically die and end up in what's called the Good Place, and one of them is uh, 
technically supposed to be in the bad place so so they're in oh. heaven but it's they're supposed to be in hell and there's this whole like middle ground purgatory sort of uh area um but it's got some really cool twists and turns and the writing is absolutely phenomenal it is so fucking hmm. smart um i highly that... highly highly recommend it with Chris that's on amazon Cristo. right uh it's on netflix okay Sweet. netflix yeah yeah, you like it is phenomenal writing. It was one of those shows that like I tried watching for a minute, um, and it kind of got like three episodes in, and I was like, oh, I'll come back to this. And then when I actually went back to, it, I was like, why did I fucking stop? This is absolutely brilliant. Um, so I highly recommend that. Very very smart writing. Uh, oh, I I recently binged the entirety of Shameless. How shameless, shameless. of you. Uh, I remember when I watched live action shows. Those were like <laughs> simpler times. This is man's ultimate fighting machine. Conventional weapons are no match for the angels. Evangelion, move out! It is mankind's last hope. Don't hold anything back! I watched Evangelion again recently. The best anime. The dub or the, the original? The best anime. That's a strong statement, sir. It is. Oh, Evangelion's fucking rad. It is fucking rad. But is it <laughs> um, better than Cowboy Bebop? No. I like it more than Cowboy Bebop, but I, I'd say they're both strong contenders for best. Okay. Evangelion relates a lot more to me personally because I too am depressed and have a lot of fucking issues I need to work Ooh. out. Aren't we all? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, but like Evangelion talks about issues that are very personal to me. That's fair. That's fair. I can respect that. I uh I think my my latest favorite one um has been uh Megalobox. I don't know if anyone's oh. seen that. Oh yeah, I, that's on Toonami. Yeah. I've seen I've seen like previews for it. It's good. It's short, sweet, simple. It's basically if like Rocky and Cowboy Bebop had a baby, you get Megalobox. Mhm. I'm actually excited for Promare to be in theaters. I'm going to go see that. I was actually just looking at tickets for that today. You should get it. It's gonna I'm be great. Uh, planning to. Yeah. Oh, that. But speaking of boxing, uh, if you if you have Verve, uh, you should check out Last Man because that's Last that's. Man. An, yep. A, 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 you have. I I know about it. I have it okay. on the I haven't watched it yet. Yeah, but in terms of like most underappreciated cartoons or animes of like this decade, I feel that's up up there with like Dan versus and stuff. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, everyone kind of mentions that one to me. Um, I just haven't sat down and done it, but I will. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, I could, I could, I could care less to ever watch like a boxing match, but like you animate it, and I'm all in. <laughs> yes, boxing animes. <laughs> even that's even basically everything with me. Even Family Guy has had good boxing animation when they did an episode <laughs> about it. Was it like rotoscoped? I think it probably was. A lot of the good animation on Family Guy is rotoscoped. Yeah, it's, they'll stick out like a sore thumb. They do, they do, because of how stilted the show is normally. By the way, uh, I don't know if you guys want to get into the questions yet, but... Uh, okay. Ooh. When will Shaq treat his artists with respect? Nah. <laughs> nice. I see you, I see you, Chris. I don't think I don't see you, Chris. That's a friend of mine. He's a bastard. But I, I love think I'm him. Facebook friends with that dude. He, uh, yeah, I am too. He's a good boy. Shout out to Chris. Der um, what's his fucking Twitter? Uh, I'll give him a shout out just to be nice. It's um, at Scratchy D Rose. Yeah. At Scratchy D Rose. Go follow him if you like art. That's 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 what I got for you. Uh. <laughs> OK, I just want to let you know, Adam, the quality yep. of questions we're getting is flavored or unflavored condoms. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, so there's two sides to that, right? Because you can either buy a box of flavored condoms, or you can, it can be determined based on what you had for dinner that day, right? Or, or you can flavor uh -huh. the unflavored condom yourself with uh, right. whatever you want. The apartment. Exactly. I just want to go down on someone and be like, "Ooh, blueberry!" <sighs> oh my god. <laughs> Personally, for me, I feel like it, like what, what con like, it's like flavored latex, basically, right? Or whatever condoms are made out of. I don't know. Latex, uh, yes. Yeah. Well, some people could have an allergy, so I didn't oh, know if the, right. like, con condom they... makers keep that in mind. Is there a non-latex one? I'm looking up now. I'm sure they do. <laughs> they 
I mean, what happened it, to the it, good days when they were made of like cow skin or whatever? Would it be kind of like a like a what are those things called? Fruit roll-ups? Oh man, yeah. yeah. Disposable, yeah. Remember that uh, fruit by the foot commercial where these kids were having a competition where they replaced shit with fruit by the foot, and it predicted our sense of humor, the millennial sense of humor. <laughs> uh, no. It's What's that about? Plain. It's these kids who go, "I've replaced blank with fruit by the foot." So you have. I've replaced your fingers with fruit by the foot. Well oh. played. I replaced your bones with fruit by the foot. <laughs> So, oh yeah according That's... to this article um non-latex condoms are made of plastic and they're uh more superior to latex because they conduct more heat they're not actually latex at all no plastic there's plastic ones and there's latex ones okay this is, good this is terrible it was a mistake to mention this <laughs> i'm still going for the fruit roll-ups one make okay, your um, own hmm. sugar Remember when uh, there was an article on this one website about donut fucking? Like, that was like, a, supposed to be a new thing. Why would you do that to a perfectly good donut? Jesus Christ. I'm with you. Could still, you could still eat the donut. I mean, I guess so. Because you don't mind a bit of, like, semen. Like, sitting there? Or is it like a like a hot, fresh-out-of-the-oven Krispy Kreme donut? <sighs> mm. Adam, please don't do this to me. I haven't okay. had sugar and forever i miss it well izzy i'm oh, about no. to i'm about to ruin your life um Please get don't. ready so um i had a conversation while i was at uh the pizzeria i work at and um about like the perfect dessert pizza right yeah and um like people like people are like oh they already make dessert pizzas and it's like basic bitch shit like s'mores pizza and i'm like we need to go deeper Ew. oh man s'mores I, i'm pretty sure domino's <laughs> has admitted they regretted their uh s'mores pizza yeah not only not only that but also like first off first off uh s'mores pizza is for basic bitches we can we can do better as a species as a group so, like, what I proposed was, like, taking the pizza dough and then, like, making it cinnamon, like, sugar swirl in there, right? And then you crust it with brown sugar so it, like, gets crisped up and you got that sugar bite to it. Then the Nutella sauce and then, like, the mush marshmallow cheese and then, like, the toppings are, like, whatever and you drizzle it with caramel and all this other shit. That, like, we need to go beyond is what I'm trying to pitch here. And nobody wants you. to listen to me. I nobody wants to so listen much. to me. <laughs> I hate you. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just be front with you. I, I don't have a sweet tooth hardly at all. What the fuck? Yep. Oh. No. Not human. I'm, hey. uh, I, I'm currently doing keto right now. Oh so yeah. I, I can have carbs and sugars. I've lost almost 110 pounds. Holy Whoa! Shit, that's amazing. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm two pounds away from being closer to 200 than 300. I'm so excited. That's incredible. Thank you. Congratulations. That's but hard Nolan, to if you do. Keep... I know about it. Is Nolan, he... Congratulations. If you keep talking about this shit, I'm going to punch you. I'm... Do it. You won't. I'm going to rip your throat out through your dick. Hey, we got a cyanide and happiness question. What's Whoa. Um, <laughs> really? Oh, uh, by uh, Trafon, what, what would you credit the longevity of cyanide and happiness? What would I credit the longevity? Like, like... Like, is it going to last? Why are or... you still alive? What? Yeah. How are you guys still alive? Why weren't you canceled? That's a good question. Um, we've been trying to get canceled for oh. years. <laughs> it's uh, the dream. But, uh, if, you, if you need advice, our friend Salty canceled himself. Oh. Yeah. Salty DK Dan did do that, actually. Uh, well, yeah, uh, go on. Them. No, uh, Dude, and I don't think anybody ever expected this thing to blow up the way that it did. Um, and it's super rewarding, super, uh, we're super appreciative to like all the fans and stuff and, and stoked that, we, dude, I get to go home and like talk about how we made a butt, you know, for, for <laughs> a living. Like I get like, that is, so there's a funny story, like what, um, uh, I'm a tangent here a little bit, but uh, when I started working um, on the show, uh i remember i was doing a bunch of like other gigs at the time a um, bunch of freelance stuff and uh i was actually doing more live action than anything and uh when i got picked up for this um 
I remember my uh, mom was saying, or my dad asked, you know, hey, what's, uh, so what, what is Adam, what is Adam doing now? Like, what is he up to? Because, you know, at the time I was hopping from one project to another and uh, my mom looked at him and she goes, well, he's doing porn. You didn't hear? And uh, <laughs> he was like, what? Like he started freaking out, you know, like, what the hell? What do you mean? Fucking porn. What are you talking about? And uh, if memory serves me correct. My brother came in and he was like, daddy, you're not getting it, man. It's really good money. Um, so that was a funny story that I basically didn't like break that, uh, I, that mold. I, I kept that going for a bit. And when we released season two of the show, we actually have, um, I think it's the second or third episode where there's, it's about a porn university. So that was the first thing that I showed him. Um, and we came full circle, so it wasn't entirely wrong. Fun fact, <laughs> I've actually animated for porn. That's true. Yeah. You did. Yeah, I worked on uh, Jurassic Woods, Swollen Ding Dong. <laughs> Jurassic Woods. Yeah, I animated Mr. TNA, the Mr. DNA parody. Oh, wow. I technically yeah. have a word name. Yeah, you're at a level that I'm never. So. Oh. Well, I mean, you can hire Izzy, so you guys can elevate yourselves to that level. Sure. I mean, let's that talk. Is good... Yeah. But anyway, um, what other questions we got? Oh, let's I don't know talk if you about answer. porn some more. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, yeah, what questions do we got? Uh, All right, you, you can pick one. Uh, we usually let the guest pick one. Oh, anyone that uh, you want. What is the usual produ production of a CNH video? Uh, That's a good one. Yeah, uh, I, like, I like that answer. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. That's it. Just um, let it happen. It's about two, two and a half months. Ooh, really? short, yeah damn that's a quick turnaround time yeah yeah um two two and a half months. i mean we're a big we're a big studio we're we're like 25 plus people um, yeah so about yeah two two and a half months uh and we're working on stuff that's all the way you know to mid 2020 right now um but for the season that takes us you know about a year um Let's see. How are you guys even considered doing pizza podcast? I don't. That, that's not a question for me. But have you guys ever considered <laughs> doing a pizza podcast movie? <laughs> that no. sounds like that sounds like a terrible idea. We've that's joked. Gonna, should do it. We joked about it being similar to the angry video game nerd movie, where we're all we, we do a road trip trying to find the last blockbuster. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. That's, that's, that sounds like a Can good I idea. On that so. one? Please. Sure. Yeah. 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 It's a reunion us... special. Oh, there's a question. Uh, uh, worst episode of Sinai and Happiness. That's a good <laughs> one. There's a funny one there. Um, I'm not going to tell you what I think's the worst because everything that I make is gold. Um, but <laughs> I can tell you what the fans hate the most for sure. Uh, is Al, Al My Dick. I don't know oh, if you've no. ever seen that one. No, I don't believe so. So Al My Dick is like this really, really long one where this guy's in a nightclub and somebody bumps into his dick and he's just screaming in pain the whole time asking everyone, you know, did you hurt my dick? Who hurt my dick? I'm not going to be mad. I'm so sorry. Please just tell me who hurt my dick. And he's just going on and on and on. Three minutes of just pain. And uh, we were, it was at the time, one of the most like, technically like advanced technical technically whatever the fucking term is is one of the most advanced ones that we've done so we're watching this thing we're like fuck yeah dude this is gonna this is gonna kill it this is amazing it looks incredible uh they're gonna love it like it's got a sick beat and everything like this is perfect uh we put it out and like we could not have pissed people off more they absolutely hated it. It didn't resonate at all. It became the most hated thing. It became a meme. People were always, you know, referencing it, which I guess, you know, for a lack of better terms, it was a hit in that sense. Um, and so that always became this running thing. That was like the worst thing we ever made, according to the fans. So I think it was like a year or two later. Um, I was mentioning earlier, you know, if you've never seen Cyanide and Happiness, go watch Ted Bear. So we have Ted Bear 1 and 2, and everyone's been asking, like, when's Ted Bear 3 coming out? When's Ted Bear 3 coming out? So on April Fool's, which, duh, should have been a telltale, uh, we released Ted Bear 3. And it's Ted Bear standing there, you know, he's like, hey, guys, I'm going to teach you guys how to survive. And, uh, <laughs> you know, but uh, so the first thing you're going to want to do, and then, like, here comes the Al My Dick guy rolling in. And he's like, excuse me, sir, do you know who hurt my dick? I'm not going to be mad. <laughs> and then it just instead plays the entire short 
all over again. <laughs> uh, and so after Fucking that fight, old. it goes right back to it, and he's just sitting there like, you know, again, sir, like, who hurt my dick? And it replays the short again at half speed. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Good. That was a fun one. Yeah. That'll those show are now my favorite, are, Adam. Yeah, those are my favorite types of uh, jokes or April Fool's is just that. I'm looking at Al My Dick, and yeah, it does look really nice. All these layers of, like, crowds. <laughs> I mean, it does look nice, at least. Yeah. Like you said. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Wow. I think my favorite one, which I thought would have been the worst, is the one where they, uh, it's the Star Trek parody where the uh, captain, like, XP gets eaten. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And That's I'm like just the, like, you're talking about the black and white one, right? The mini? Yeah. Yeah, hmm. mini. It was, was a good better. one. 10 out of 10. <laughs> Thank you. I love, <laughs> um, I love Hand Me a Beer, one of our other minis, where the guy's like, hey, man, can you hand me a beer? He's like, sure. And he's like reaching over for it, and because we don't have fingers on our characters, his like little nub hand just starts like splicing and splitting all open with these little fingers popping out, and he's just screaming in excruciating pain to grab the beer. He's like, "Oh, here you go." It's uh pretty good. I when I was young, like that kind of reminded me of something. Like you un- awoke a uh, deep seated memory in me when I was watching like the Powerpuff Girls when I was younger. I'm like, so where are their fingers? Do they have fingers? Don't do they, worry about do it. They, do they grow fingers? Like, everybody else has fingers. Why don't they have fingers? Where are their fingers? They're, they're live they're accidents. Experiment. Yeah. Are we talking about Powerpuff Girls? Sorry, I blanked for a second. They're monsters. <laughs> I, was just, I was just talking about the uh, uh, intricacies of the Powerpuff Girls and uh, their no fingers. They uh they actually made a reference to it and won the cartoon cartoon nights. I, I guess Mojo Jojo was the host of that night. Uh, mm-hmm. You guys remember that cartoon cartoon? Yeah, cartoon Fridays. Yeah, yeah, of course. And there's a part where like Mojo Jojo's like, and what about those Powerpuff Girls? Ever noticed how they don't have fingers? How do they hold things? How do they make a fist? You mean they're just beating me with flippers? first time anyone pointed that out yeah but um here's another question um at ck draw stuff says question would you rather have a streaming service that has all the shows streamed on a weekly basis or a service that just like dumps it all out all at once i honestly miss having a little less control of what i watch Mm. i i feel like i spend more time on like netflix or amazon looking for something and then just ending up like getting frustrated, can't figure it out, and just watching the same show I've already watched a hundred times, I kind of sometimes miss being able to let the fate of the uh, of the universe, you know, click on a channel, and what pops up is what pops up. Hmm. There needs to be a random button on Netflix. I would love that. That was a cool idea. I actually didn't know that Disney Plus is going to be like a weekly release. I thought they were going to be dropping everything all at once like everything else. Hmm. I guess it'll benefit them in the long run since, you know, if someone... Longevity. Just, yeah, you know. Since, doing at least life. it'll get... Yeah, get in at 30, 30, 30 days for free and then, you know... Yeah, they, you know. yeah nobody can take advantage of that, like, system. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I don't know. I, I've been spoiled now, you know, because I, I do miss, you know, aspects of I got this day to look forward to this show. Um, but at the same time now, especially like, at least in my personal life and my personal schedule, it's like, it's always very, very, very busy. So for me to be able to like, you know, bum rush through stuff, um, I'm, I'm spoiled now by the whole Netflix thing. I mean, same, you know, I was just talking about the good place just released, what was it yesterday or, or something like that. And the fact that I have them all there and I can just go through them. Um, I, I dig it, but I understand, you know the element of the other aspect well because mm-hmm. like um I, I remember watching digimon as a kid i don't know if you guys uh, if you're, yeah. Yeah. you're familiar with it I and am, i yeah. remember the first season being this really long epic journey and it's because it you know it aired on a weekly basis well i think it might have had like five episodes a week but because of it being long drawn out it felt more bigger and grander than when i watched it again as an adult and it was like 52 episodes and they went by really quickly and it was so short and quick and it kind of whimpered, you know? Right. 
And, and I think that some shows, particularly mystery shows like Gravity Falls and Amphibia, those shows totally benefit to having a stretched out um, airing schedule just because it gives more time for people to like um, process. process it, think of mm-hmm. theories, communicate, become like those have more of a community around them versus um, Amphibia just released all in one month and there was no time to speculate. Everything's already known and it yeah. kind of... No, that, is, that is super like one of the things I do hate the most about when everything drops is like, especially with big shows, even if I don't have the time, I got to somehow f- find the friggin' time to watch it because in the next five minutes, you know, all the spoilers are going to be out there and it's a pain in my ass. I was just going to say <laughs> also another downside is uh, they can split up like seasons into like mini seasons and call it like that. You know, it, oh, this is this is like season four when in reality it's just like the latter half of season two. And uh, like with she I really like she how it is right now. Um. I mean, I like I like the show, but like I hate how it's released. It's really annoying. Well, how I do mean, they release it? The fir- this is the first time it only shifted to a new schedule. That sucks. Yeah, no, like if the same thing happened with uh, Voltron. Voltron, where they release like they have a, an actual season that's like paced with twenty episodes or so in mind, and then they release like seasons in like four or five batches, and it's like stop that. I gotta say, man, I loved that new season of Ultron. I mean, the mixture between the 2D and 3D was done so well. Mm-hmm. Um, it was beautiful to watch. Um, I'm a little biased, too, because one of my friends is uh, one of the paladins. Um, oh, voice actor? But, mm-hmm. That's awesome. Uh, 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 Bex, De La Klaus, she's, uh, or, uh, they, they're the, uh, uh, the green paladin. Oh, uh, Hitch. Hitch. Hitch, yeah. yeah. And uh, I know I... I Oh my God, they're an incredible actor. Um, but uh, I love, I I love the series. I fell in love with it because it wasn't. I don't feel like it was trying to be something more than it was, um, and and it was pretty self aware in that sense. And so it was just one of those things where you can kind of watch and have that nostalgia of the old Voltron, and just kind of in, enjoy it as is. And it wasn't like this expectation of being something much bigger and much more grand. So I think it was done pretty well. The writing at times was a little corny, of course, but it also, I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't bad. No, uh, the Netflix DreamWorks crossover um, 80s properties shows have been really solid. Voltron was great. she was really awesome. Oh, this reminds me, we got news because uh, He-Man is also getting a Netflix series oh, yeah. and it's going to be by the <laughs> studio who does uh, <laughs> Castlevania. Yeah, Powerhouse, yeah. I think. Powerhouse. Those guys are amazing. They're, that Castlevania stuff is incredible. They're, all that 2D animation uh, is absolutely phenomenal. I need a. I ran into an RTX. Uh, my fr- my new friend Ashley. She actually was a storyboard artist for Castlevania. Yeah. Uh, we should probably get her on the podcast at some point. But also coming from Powerhouse Animation, it was something called Seis Manos or Five Hands. Wait, one of those tres cuatro cinco. Se- <laughs> That's six. <laughs> Damn it! Look, it's six hands. But in Spanish, say smile. So that looks also really good. But I don't know when it's coming out. Yeah. That's all I had to say. Will there be a sequel of The White Knight? Um, I hope so. Uh, and then Purgatoni Season 2. I really hope so. Purgatoni was a production pain. That one was tough. Uh, we... I don't know if you guys assault Purgatoni. Um, one of our other shows. That's like... That's... 100% not cyanide and happiness style. Um, it was a completely different look. And it's about Tony Purgatelli, who is in purgatory and he decides on, you know, who's going to hell or heaven. Uh, he's kind of a piece of shit himself, um, but is just also wondering, you know, why, why is he there uh, making these decisions for people when he can't um, fully understand, you know, uh himself and you know where he would ultimately end up and that one's a lot of fun we did that one so fast we made eight episodes in like a gosh i don't even remember what feels like a six month time period um Mm -hmm. it was ridiculously fast like eight episodes like you know 11 10 or 13 minutes a piece it's wild 
That was a pain. So I hope we get more time if we ever get a season two. I hope we get a season two. Well, I guess one last question uh, by at Focus Double says, how far are you willing to go in terms of making dark or edgy jokes? Um, what is I like far, that. Yeah, no, that's actually a very common one we get. Um, it, there's a big misconception that everybody, you know, sort of thinks we're assholes. Um, and they're not like <laughs> entirely wrong. Uh, we don't we don't outright try to offend any person group stereotype so on and so forth um and we don't try to be offensive we just kind of found out that we are um (laughs) so i think as long as it's not crossing like a direct line of literally trying to hurt someone's feelings which we don't ever really you know want to do it's just if we find it funny then I mean, that's kind of it. We just do it. Yeah. Your, your yeah. first statement was surprisingly wholesome for cyanide <laughs> and happiness. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's you'd be shocked. Um, oh, but yeah. no, it's, it's it's funny. Like I said, it's uh, it's one of those things where you just kind of fall into this uh, this stereotype. And uh, I mean, again, you know. We got asshole moments, but they're humorous asshole moments. We're not offended mm-hmm. towards like a group or or anyone specific. So, we try not to we try not to like pinpoint anyone unless that person is a fucking asshole. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Okay, but I guess that's all for the podcast. Unless J- uh, I was gonna say Jim, <laughs> Izzy, or Nolan, you guys have anything to say? Yeah, I just want to say. <laughs> hey guys, it's me, Jim, and today not, uh, Jim's not here. He'll be on not next anymore. Time. <laughs> uh, I was gonna no, say don't like, say, don't say not anymore. You're gonna well, he's, 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 no, he's yeah, coming second. back eventually. He's been killed off. Cannon, no. part of the lore now. Oh, uh, but I was gonna say, oh. Adam, you were a great guest. I really enjoyed chatting with you. Yeah, uh, same sentiments, shared sentiments. Kind of thank you guys yeah no thanks thanks for having me i appreciate it it was uh it was awesome meeting uh you folks um multiple times at times uh yeah no okay. <laughs> i guess uh this whole the whole self-plug business you know if, if anybody wants to uh come meet us at cons or conventions you know we travel to all of them i'd mm-hmm. love for uh all the fans to come out and meet us you know i do a bunch of i do a bunch of the shows and a bunch of panels and stuff and uh yeah you can always kind of find out where where I'm going and stuff. If you want to follow me on Instagram, it's kind of just like my name. It's literally Adam Nasrallah. Nobody's got my last name. I absolutely love it because <laughs> I can use it for everything. That's um, awesome. But yeah, follow me on that and uh, come say hi. So yeah. on and so forth. I don't ever I... use Twitter. Twitter is annoying. No, <laughs> I'm sorry. Fair. I'm really bad yeah. at it. But you can you can use that too. But Instagram's pretty dope. If you like photography, I'm a big photographer. Which, by the way, um, we we met Adam through MomoCon. So if you want to see the Pizza Party podcast at convention, um, you know, know, make sure you suggest the convention. You know, let them know that you're interested in us and they invite us. Beg for (laughs) MomoCon was great. (laughs) MomoCon was great. It was. It was really good. Where are you guys from? I never asked. I'm from North Carolina. Okay. Hate it. The the most wait, southern wait. point of Texas. Were you I'm in, from Indiana. In, okay, southern point of Texas, Indiana. Wait, were you in Raleigh? Nolan, were you at were you at the Galaxy or SuperCon, whatever it's called? Raleigh. No, I didn't. I didn't have the money nor time to go, but I wanted to. Okay, fair. Yeah. What, um, were you there? Yeah. Damn. Yeah. Could have hung out. It was the uh, first time we were out there. Um, they invited us out, and it was it was a sweet sweet con. A lot, of, a lot of fun guests and uh it was it was one of the smaller ones but it was crammed in this really tight space so it was very like intimate um and uh, i enjoyed it it was pretty cool yeah mm-hmm. speaking of other cons I, it was really neat running into you at rtx like oh yeah conventions are just weird because like i had ran into like three or four people that i had only saw a couple of weeks ago from MomoCon, and just like the idea that I'm from Indiana, but, you know, going from Atlanta to Austin, running into people yeah. um, of all the places of the world, it makes the world seem smaller. Oh, it's so small. Like, it's 
you know, that's why they call it like a con family, right? We're like a big ass circus, just kind of traveling from one city to another. Um, and I've made so many friends that way. And, and it's so cool to like bump into people that you haven't seen in a long time, but have this sort of like common commonality between each other um, when it comes to these shows. And uh, I feel very fortunate to have gone to a bunch of them and, and, and made all these kind of friends uh, to meet over and over and over. And so, yeah, no, it is crazy small. Um, everybody knows everybody and there's also like a really scary element to that. Yeah, I, so, I believe that, yeah. Don't fuck it up. <laughs> so is this the end of the podcast? Of Jim. I believe so. Huh? Yes. Of Jim. The end of Jim, yeah. Oh, the end end of Ava, the end of Jim. Rest in peace. Rest in peace, Rip. Jim. We never knew each other, but I'm sad. Someday. You know, I liked you. <laughs> Good. You, oh, yeah. you sound yeah. so somber, like he would have liked you. <laughs> but yeah, uh, I'm Nolan. Uh, help me, please. Need... And, I'm, and I'm Pan. I'm Izzy. And our uh, guest. Yeah, I'm Adam. Adam Nasrallah. Anything yeah. you want to plug before you head out? Uh, why not, right? Um, yeah, so uh, check out uh, a lot of our upcoming stuff. Um, our biggest one going to be uh, Sinai and Happiness Show uh, Season 4 on Verve. You can see the first three seasons right now. Sign up for 30-day trial. Check it out. Um, and keep following all of our social medias. Like I said, we have, you know, official Expose them on Instagram um, and, uh, and Twitter. Uh, you can find us yeah, like I said, everywhere where the herpes just type up Sinai and happiness. Uh, if you want to follow me or you want to know like me or my life, um, you can just plug in, you know, Adam Nasrallah, literally like slam together Adam Nasrallah, N U S R A L L A H. That's on Instagram, Twitter, whatever other socials um, that you want to use. Yeah. Uh, thanks for having me, guys. It was a blast. Yeah. I appreciate yeah, it. Yeah. Thank you for Bye. coming on. Yeah. Yeah. You were great. Bye, every pony. Ah!